Welcome back viewers. You are watching Eclectic English with Roma and uh, today I am back with one more topic uh, from class 12 CBSC English syllabus that is the English core and today uh, I am taking up chapter 3 of book Flamingo and the title is Deep Water and this uh, chapter is written by William Douglas. Uh, it's an autobiography of William Douglas wherein he talks about his fears. Okay. And now let's talk about the title, Deep Water. It means uh, being in dangerous or in vulnerable situation, right? It's a famous idiom. So whenever you hear someone saying that I'm in deep waters, that means a person is in trouble situation, okay? But here uh, I've already discussed that he, uh, William Douglas, will talk about his fears in this chapter. So uh, fear of, uh, which fear? Fear of water, okay? So he had, uh, he was suffering from hydrophobia, okay? So uh, this uh, title justifies it, uh, I mean justifies uh, the whole chapter, okay, uh, why? Because he'll share his experience uh, being in water, okay. Uh, now uh, I'll uh, discuss the whole chapter under following heads. So these are the highlights of uh, uh, today's lecture. Like I'll talk about the author, introduction, meaning of difficult expressions, characters and places, uh, summary of the story, story map. Uh, message values raised in the story uh, theme and important questions okay so in order to have a thorough understanding you need to watch the whole uh, lecture till the end right uh, I think uh, I won't be able to complete it in uh, one go so I'll uh, post two dif uh, different videos that means part one and part two so in part one I'll try to uh, cover till uh, story map of this chapter okay now, uh, since I have already shared with you that William Douglas um, uh, will talk about his fear um, in this uh, the story, fear of water uh, he had in his life and how he overcome it that we will get to know. But uh, before uh, moving ahead, I would just like to share with you that where from uh, fear arises, right? What are what are the basis of fears and why do we get fearful um, of, uh, of different things or different situations, right? So... As far as I have analyzed, uh, fear, um, you know, occurs in our mind when we uh, live in um, um, imagination, right? We do not live in reality. We are we are rooted in our mind. Only then, uh, you know, because of excessive imagination, because of excessive uh, train of thoughts, of uh, you know, it, it it evokes fear uh, in our mind, right? Mind itself has two components, right? One is imagination, and one is memory. Memory, as in, um, um, like, uh, suppose in our in, in the recent past we had some, or in the distant past we had some bad experience about something, and whenever uh, that thing will come fresh in our mind, we will feel fearful of that thing, right? So all in all, it's because it's happening uh, uh, because of excessive imagination, right? And this excessive imagination, the, these trains of thoughts in our mind are self-created. So we can say that these self-created thoughts uh, are non-existent. Why? Because uh, things which are there, which is there in our imagination is not reality. It is, it is not existent at all, right? And uh, people keep thinking, you know, we all keep thinking, you know, when, before attempting anything, like what is going to happen next? What will happen if I'll do this? I'll do that. What would be the repercussions? You know, hundreds, uh, hundreds and thousands of things keep running in our mind, right? And what is the result of that excessive imagination? What what happens after that? You know, it begets doubts in our minds, and because of these doubts, you know, we we stop ourselves, we restrain ourselves from attempting many things which we could have, which we could have, uh, you know, attempted and would have been successful in that. As in the words of William Shakespeare. Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. So uh, it's very clear through this uh, statement that our doubts act as traitors in our lives and they, they inhibit us, they restrain us from uh, achieving our full potential by, uh, by daring to attempt things, right? So what we have to do, what we shall do uh, in, in this situation. So we, we need to be bold enough to face our fears, right? And 
and try our best to overcome it right as uh, when we will read the chapter we will get to know how william douglas who had uh, an aversion to water a great uh, fear was there in his mind uh, against water but what uh, how through his efforts through his consistent and persistent efforts he was able to remove his uh, fears right now and uh, let's uh, uh, talk about the author right okay so uh, this uh, chapter is written by william orwell douglas right his full name is william orwell douglas and this is his timeline he was born uh, on 16 october 1898 and died in the year 1980 on the 19 january he was born in maine minnesota and raised in uh, yakima he was raised in yakima washington okay so he uh, he was an american jurist and politician and served as an associate justice of the supreme court of us uh, he retired in um, in the year 1975 uh, and the total term of his servitude in the court was uh, uh, longest uh, in the history of the court he was the longest serving justice in the history of the court and he was nominated um, as a jurist by president roosevelt now the brief introduction of uh, this chapter Uh, I have already told you that this is an excerpt from his autobiography. Uh, the name of his autobiography is "Of Men and Mountains," and in this excerpt, he uh, will talk about here his fear of water. Right? He was hydrophobic, and uh, we'll get to know in uh, when we will read the chapter that how he overcomes his fear, and uh, and later on how he felt after overcoming his fears. Right? So his will, his determination uh, to overcome his fears. Uh, and confirms the proverbial truth uh, where there is a will there is a way uh, fine now uh, let's know the characters and places in the story uh, douglas uh, is the um, uh, highlighted character he is uh, he's the narrator of the story and he uh, he uh, the whole story revolves around him right the minor characters uh, were like a young boy and uh, uh, some uh, you know uh, memories of his mother so mother doesn't appear in the story but yes there is a mention of um, uh, uh, his mother so that is why i just written okay so the important places one is ymca pool and yakima YMCA is a swimming pool run by Young Men's Christian Association, and uh, Yakima uh, is a city located about 60 miles southeast of Mount Rainier in Washington. So we have to, we must know about uh, these two places uh, uh, to have a thorough understanding of the chapter. Okay, now let's know about the meanings of uh, difficult expressions. so these expressions are written on page number 23 of your book uh, so please open the uh, open your book just to have a better understanding of it i'm just i'm i'm sharing the meaning and you can just note it down okay so the first expression is treacherous when something is treacherous that means uh, which is uh, you know it is unpredictable so unpredictable danger is lying behind it right then subdued my pride it means to lower or restrain now uh, the intensity of self respect and confidence third one is flailed at the surface it means to strike or lash out vigorously at the surface of the water and trying to come out of it okay now the next one is fishing for landlocked salmon it means to go fishing for a specific variety of salmon available in certain lakes okay next one is bob to the surface like a cork uh, it means to float or show the characteristics of buoyancy as a cork in the water next is misadventure uh, it means an incident that turns out to be a disaster okay then next one is curtain of life fell it means a near death uh, experience uh, the last one is back and forth across the pool which means to swim across the swimming pool from one side to uh, the other now let's uh, discuss the summary of the of this chapter okay i will explain the summary of this chapter with the help of the story map right so i'll talk about the exposition that is the beginning of the story then rising action then climax then falling action and then the end or the denouement of the story these four two points are covered under exposition then rising action then these next points climax then falling action and these last points under end or the denouement of the story you can please take a screenshot okay so let's start with the summary okay so story exposes with author's revelation of his aversion to water 
when he was three or four years old, he went to California Beach with his father. So there, unfortunately, the waves knocked him down. He swallowed water and developed a permanent fear. Okay, so the father. Uh, laughed at him because he knew that there was no harm but that experience uh, uh, bred a permanent fear in his subconscious mind right and as the years rolled by he again started uh, preparation to learn swimming even after being uh, warned by his mother right so what he did he took a pair of wings and uh, uh, planned to go to ymca that is young men christian association pool and learn swimming there by aping others okay so the writer started uh, learning swimming in the ymca swimming pool in Yakima but some misadventure happened there now what was the misadventure one day he was waiting for the other boys to come at the pool a big boy suddenly played a dangerous prank with him and pushed him into the water the writer was terribly frightened okay now here then Douglas tried to save his life when he, when he was plunged into the water okay so he went down uh, nine feet into the water and when he reached the bottom he jumped upward with all his strength so this was his plan that once he will touch the tiled floor he will push his body up right and once he will reach the surface of the water he'll catch hold of something he'll grab something and he will uh, thereby he will go out of the pool but nothing of that sort happened he came up but very slowly okay he tried to catch hold of something like a rope but grasped only at water then he was enveloped by sheer stark terror because all his efforts were uh, going futile right he tried to shout out but no sound came out of his throat okay he went down again for the second time his lungs ached his head throbbed in pain and his heart told him that uh, he was alive because heart was pounding heart was uh, pumping blood now again uh, he uh, he reached the tiled floor he pushed his body up but all in vain he tried to grab he, he tried to catch hold of ropes ladders and water wing uh, water wings but all in vain so finally all his efforts were going in vain and his fight for survival was almost lost okay so uh, then he went down again for the third time and this time all efforts all fear ceased he had become unconscious right he was moving towards peaceful death he felt that the curtain of his life had fallen okay and the writer was in peace so uh, but after some time he regained his consciousness he realized that uh, some arms were around him and uh, he was taken out of the water right and when he uh, regained his consciousness he found himself lying on the side of the pool with the other boys nearby and the terror that he had experienced in the pool never left him it haunted him for years to come right so that terror destroyed Douglas social life as well it spoiled many of his expeditions of canoeing of swimming and fishing etc it spoiled uh, his pleasures in Maine Lakes, New Hampshire, Columbia and Bumping Lake etc. So whenever he went, he used to go near water, the same terror used to be fresh in his mind. But the writer was determined to um, overcome his terror, determined to uh, conquer his terror. So the longing to swim revived again in his mind and he, this time what he did, he engaged an instructor. Okay, so he took help of a swimmer instructor to learn swimming the instructor taught him various actions necessary in swimming part by part he put his face underwater and made him learn the technique of inhaling and exhaling okay and uh, William Douglas practiced it for several weeks together he religiously followed all the instructions given by the instructor he had to kick uh, with his legs a few weeks on the side of the pool and at last the instructor combined all his actions and made the writer a perfect swimmer he learned swimming so the William Douglas had learned swimming but that terror still continued in his mind so we can say our childhood fears do not vanish so easily so fearful is the fear so whenever uh, he was in water the same terror returned right but henceforward the author um, you know 
uh, was was quite determined so he started terrorizing the terror uh, itself right so whenever terror uh, came in his mind he confronted it by asking sarcastically as um, what it can really do to him right he frowned at the fear and went on he plunged into the water as as if to defy the fear right so we can say once he took the uh, once he took courage the terror vanquished right he faced uh, the challenge deliberately in various places uh, like warm uh, like warm lake right he went to warm lake alone he dived and swam across the lake alone and finally he vanished he he vanquished uh, you know, all all the fear whatever was left in his mind and uh, there was and uh, so uh, the winner douglas got a new experience that what was the new experience that death itself is full of peace and uh, only the fear of death terrorizes right and fi and in the end douglas will to live grew in intensity so once uh, once he took courage all his terror vanquished and uh, in the end he emerges as a lively a very strong and a relaxed person right and uh, ultimately uh, he attained peace of mind okay so i i hope you have understood the summary of this chapter Uh, rest analysis part that is title justification message values raised and theme uh, that i'll discuss in the next video uh, thank you so much uh, for your patience and please uh, if you have liked the video press the like button and uh, subscribe my channel for further updates thank you